Hey guys, this is Will Doggett from loopsandworship.com. I want to talk you through how to set up Touch OSC on your iPad to control Ableton Live. Now, for this video, a couple things you're going to need. The first is to actually download Touch OSC on your iPad. You can get it from the iTunes App Store. Just su uh, search in the search bar for Touch OSC. Uh, it's a $4.99 app, and it's going to be well, well worth your money. The other thing you need to do is download the Touch OSC editor. Uh, that's a program for your PC or Mac. Uh, for this video, I'm working on a Mac, so I'll talk through all the Mac terms and how to set that up. If you're on a PC, it's, it's a little different, um, but we'll talk from a Mac's perspective for this tutorial. Then the other thing you need to do is download Live Control for your computer. Um, that'll be a DMG file that you open up and install a couple different things. Um, but the first thing we need to do is let's head over to our computer and we want to install, um, double click on our Live Control zip and that's going to open up this Live Control DMG here. You can see that and we have a lot of different things in here. The first thing you need to do is drag Live Control into your Applications folder. Okay, So that's going to be big and I'll go through the process and that's going to get that ready for us here in a second. Now what we want to do is we want to um, install, uh, click on this Live Control installer.jar, double click on it. It's going to give us this message. We're going to click open. It's Everything's going to be okay. Now I will tell you this process is a little scary the first time I did it because of a message we'll get here in a second. But we're going to press next and then when it asks for our installation path, what that is, is that is the location on our computer where our, our most recent version of Live is installed. So what I'm going to do is click Browse, and then I'm going to find in my Applications folder, you'll see I have a couple different versions of Live here, but the most recent one I have is Live 8.2.5. So all I'm going to do is highlight that, I'm going to press Choose, and uh, select the installation path, that shows up perfect. Now the next one is the one I got hung up on for a while. I was terrified of pressing this because of this message. Next, oh my gosh, the directory already exists. Are you sure you want to install here and possibly overwrite exi existing files? We're going to click yes. Okay, so all that's going to do is that's going to install a script um, and it's going to allow us to access live control from Ableton Live. So since I already have it installed, I'm going to press no for now. But you're going to want to press yes and that's going to install that script into live. And then as soon as we're done, we can press quit. Um, cancel installation, we're good there. So now that we have that script installed, we need to do a couple more things. So first, um, after you've installed your Touch OSC editor, go ahead and open that up. We'll get the same message about it being installed uh, from Safari, downloaded, whatever. That's good, that's completely fine. So what we need to do is we need to open up our live control template in our Touch OSC editor. Really simple to do. Um, once you have your OSC editor installed, uh, we need to go to open. Then we need to navigate to where that template is found. So since I'm working with my iPad, I'm going to select Live Control dash iPad dash uh, dash touch uh, or excuse me dot touch OSC, and I'm going to press open. So all it's going to do is open up that template. And the next piece of this is we need to press sync. Okay, before we do this, we need to make sure our iPad and our computer are on the same uh, wireless network. So the way to do this is we go up here to our airport settings. We see we're on Linksys. Um, on my iPad, I'm going to go over to my settings tab and I'm going to make sure Wi-Fi set to Linksys. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to open up Touch OSC on my iPad. Go ahead and get this cranking and ready to go. Um, it's going to open it up. And then what I need to do is go to layout here. All right. And I'm going to click add. I want to add a layout. Now what should happen is as soon as I click this, I should see the Touch OSC editor show up. So I don't see anything now. So what I want to do is press sync. Okay, and this is going to happen on my computer. And there we go. We see it, it pop up. Now I've got two of these showing up for my computer. And I'm going to go with the first one. Okay, and we see downloading. What's happening is it's transferring that script, uh, that layout from Touch OSC editor onto my iPad. Existing layout, live control, iPad will be over it and continue. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to sacrifice all that hard work I did before, before for the sake of showing you guys how to do this. So essentially what we've done now is we've added or uploaded that template to our iPad um, using the sync function of Touch OSC Editor. Now we can close this window, we can get rid of the stop sync, and uh, what we can actually do is just close out Touch OSC Editor. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to open up Live Control. So we've installed that already, and essentially what Live Control is, is it's kind of a middleman between Ableton Live and Touch OSC for us. So it's going to allow our iPad and Ableton Live to communicate. The first thing I want to do is in this MIDI port, 
I want to select from live control one so I'm just gonna to go to that drop down arrow um, before we move on one thing I want to do is go up to file MIDI setup and the only controls I want selected input and output I want to make sure live control one and output uh, from live control one are selected okay if any of these other ones are selected go ahead and disable those we only want to deal with these two so now what I need to do is connect my iPad to live control the way to do that is I'm going to go back a step on my touch OSC on my iPad going to go to connections we want to make sure I'm going to turn this off real quick we want to make sure that OSC under connections is turned on so I'm going to turn that on and uh, the first time you do this these settings are probably going to be blank okay but they're going to be uh, filled in automatically when we press found host so I see live control I'm going to select that and it's going to automatically fill these options in okay and that's great that's what we want to happen um, now uh, a couple things you may need to tweak. Make sure your port for outgoing is set to 5000. I think it does that automatically. Make sure your port for incoming is set to 5001. Everything else should be filled out here, um, but if not, make sure you go ahead and set those settings. Okay, then we can backtrack a little bit, touch OSC. Now, what we're going to do as soon as I press done, you're going to see over here on my computer that connected device is going to show up as Will Doggett's iPad. Um, running touch OSC. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay, so everything should be set up um, to where we can communicate between our iPad and Ableton Live now. Now, if we've installed our script properly for live, uh, then what we'll need to do is go into our preferences. The way we can access this, I use my shortcut, uh, command comma. We can also go up to our file menu, oh, excuse me, our live menu, and go to preferences. And then we're going to work in the MIDI sync tab. I want to go to control surface and select live control to okay and that's going to select in my control surface I want to leave input to none and output to none one other thing we have to do if we want um, to use our keyboards and our drum pads and live controls we want to make sure our input here uh, for live control one under our MIDI port section we want to make sure track is turned on okay that's going to be important if we want to actually record some MIDI data um, and record parts with our iPad. So now, if I close out of this and go back to live, you're going to see this red ring uh, show up in Ableton Live. And essentially, what that means is this ring is going to represent the seven scenes, the seven rows that we see in, uh, see in our iPad in launcher mode. Okay. So to test and make sure everything's working, everything should be working now. We've connected our iPad to Live Control. We've set our ports properly. Um, everything should be good. To test, I'm going to do this really simply. I'm going to go to my mixer tab. I want to turn my metronome on. Okay, so it's turned on. I'm going to press start. Okay, let me turn up my volume here. There we go. My click is working. Everything's working properly. So it's really, really simple to do. Now, one step that I want to show you that's uh, really useful for me is if we press this I button up here, that's where we go to all our settings. Um, I go to options and I turn stay connected on. Okay, so I want to make sure that stays uh, when I use touch OSC and I use live control that it stays connected. Now what that means is I can back out of my iPad if for some reason I wanted to go to my wonder list here I could go to wonder list and do some work um, and then I could go back into touch OSC I could go over here let's search for it okay it's gonna open up now let's see if it worked still connected so uh, it's gonna be probably really rare that you're gonna stand on stage or want to check your email or check your wonder list for tasks um, but if you want to, if you're set to stay connected, you should stay connected and every, everything should be good to go. Um, so this is essentially how we set up Touch OSC using the live control template with Ableton Live. If you guys have any questions, uh, leave a comment below the video. Uh, shoot me an email, will at loopsandworship.com, and uh, I'll be more than happy to help. But thanks so much for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll talk to you soon.